Welcome back. In this session, we're going to look at Simulink libraries, why they exist, how to use them, how to modify them, disabling, breaking, and restoring library links, and pushing or pulling library changes and models. First off, let's discuss what libraries are and why you should use them. Libraries are basically special model type files that you can use for models that you want to reuse. When you are creating a Simulink model, you will often find that you want to use a model as a subsystem in more than one place within a larger model. Libraries are great for this. They are also helpful when there is some core logic that you want to be able to use in multiple models. For example, let's suppose that you have some logic for controlling a valve. This logic may include a simple controller, linearization maps, perhaps maps for the discharge or flow coefficient, maps for converting an area command to a position command, logic to superimpose a dither, apply limits on actuator movement, etc. Once you have this logic worked out, you may find that whenever you want to model a valve or a particular valve, you want to reuse that logic. Rather than copying and pasting the logic from a model, you can just put the logic into a library and then pull it into a model. This offers a huge advantage. Anytime that you want to make a change to your reusable logic in the library, say making a bug fix or adding a new feature, you can do so simply by changing the library. You don't have to go into each model that used the logic or into each instance of the logic in your model in order to make the changes. You can just make them in one place and your changes will be automatically cascaded to all models which have that library as a dependency. This is a huge time saver and helps prevent making mistakes as well. To create a new library, you can first create a new model. From the New Models file option in the menu, select New, then Library. Then, once you've created your new logic in the new library, just click and drag that logic, preferably in a subsystem into your model of choice. I'm going to illustrate this with a really simple case. I'll create a subsystem that adds 1 to an input and then outputs the result. So I'll pull in a constant block and a summation block into the library and have a signal line extending from the output as well as from the first input of the summation block. Then I'll select all of my logic, right click and select create subsystem from selection. This just created an instant subsystem for me. I'll save my library as test library. Now I'll take the model that I opened drop in a constant block in a display, and give the constant block a value of 3. And then I'll click on my subsystem and drag it into my model, connecting the subsystem's I.O. to the constant block and the display. When I run the simulation, the output of the subsystem is 4, just as I expected. Now I'll make an exact copy of my logic just below the original and set the constant's value to 5. So far, there's nothing particularly special about what I just put together, but the important part is about to come. First, I'll close the library just so that I can show you something. When I reopen the library, if I try to click and drag on the subsystem block in the library, I'm prevented from moving it. A message pops up indicating that I need to unlock the library. To do this, go to Diagram, unlock library. This feature is just intended to protect the library from accidental changes. Now I'll set the constant blocks value to be 2 rather than 1, save and close the library. If I run my model again, the outputs aren't 3 and 5, they're 5 and 7. In other words, even if I am reusing some logic within my model, by using a library I don't have to change every instance of my subsystem's logic anytime that I want to make an update. Instead, I can just modify the library itself once, and all instances of that library logic within my model will be updated. This means that libraries make my code very maintainable. It becomes modular and easy to propagate changes across a model. Also, it is possible to have multiple models pulling from the same library, so libraries are fantastic for reusing your logic. Sometimes, when working in a library block that you have pulled into a model, you may want to make some experimental changes in just that one instance of the library. In that case, rather than changing the library itself, you can right-click over the library block and go to Library Link and then Disable Link. This makes the instance of the library within the model that you were working on just a local copy, and you can change it any way you like without ever having any effect on the source library. For example, let's say that I want to add a game block for a quick test. I'll go ahead and do that now. you'll notice that the library with the broken link shows a broken link icon in the lower left-hand corner. This would be a great example situation where you might just want to disable the library link and then add the new block. 
However, you might find yourself wanting to undo your change. In that case, right click, go to library link, and click on resolve link. A dialog pops up from which I will select the restore option for my action and then click on OK. When I check in the library instance in my model, my local change has been undone. On the other hand, you might also encounter a situation in which, after disabling a library link, you want to make your change permanent locally. In that case, I'll first break the library link, then I'll right click on the local instance of the library again and click on the break link option. Finally, you might decide that you want to make your changes permanent and you want your local changes in the library within the model to be propagated back out to the source library. I'll pull in the gain block again, right click on the library instance, go to library link, click on resolve link and select push for my action. This pushes my local changes back to the source library. Once I've pushed my change, I'll need to save the library again to make my change permanent. Libraries are a key component in the Simulink ecosystem, and using them can save you a lot of time and headaches. They are like reusable code. You can create them once, validate them once, and then use them over and over whenever you need them. Now that you know how to use libraries, resist the temptation to just copy and paste logic subsystems, and do yourself a favor by using Simulink libraries. I hope today's session has taught you some new things, and look forward to seeing you next time as we turn our attention to masks, which also help make logic reusable and easy to work with.